Good news, we have solutions to climate change. Since the 20th century, scientists have been researching ways to artificially lower the Earth's average temperature to avoid the worst outcomes of global warming. Now with today's technology and decades of research behind us, we can start cooling Earth's climate as soon as next week. So why aren't we? Well, it's a little complicated. In parts one and two of this series on geoengineering, we covered some of the leading ideas behind solar radiation management and greenhouse gas removal strategies. While these ideas are all fascinating, there can only be one best. In this video, I'll be comparing three factors for each idea to give each one their own score. The first factor will be cost, as any solution to climate change needs to be as cheap as possible. The second factor will be danger, to assess how serious the negative side effects will be. The final factor will be uncertainty, or how certain we are that this strategy will actually cool the earth. The plan that scores the lowest will be the one that, in my opinion, has the best potential to reverse global warming and put an end to the climate crisis. Now that we've got our rules set, let's start the competition off with stratospheric aerosol injection. Stratospheric aerosol injection, or SAI, is the plan to emit aerosols into the stratosphere, where they will block a small amount of sunlight and cool the planet down. The cost of such a project depends on what aerosol we plan to use and how we get it up there. Sulfate aerosols, the most widely studied, are dirt cheap, costing only about $250 per metric ton. This means most of the cost will go towards getting them into the stratosphere. While there are several methods to doing this, ranging from hot air balloons to massive towers to the stratosphere, the most prevalent plan is a fleet of special aircraft to make daily flights to and from the stratosphere. A fleet of stratospheric aerosol injection lofters, also known as sails, would not be cheap, costing about $75 million per craft. We would also need a couple hundred of these crafts, depending on how much warming we want to offset. To estimate the costs for SAI and all our other strategies, I will be using the scenario known as RCP-6. This assumes a future where emissions peak in 2080 and CO2 levels reach 670 parts per million. Using RCP-6 as a baseline for the total cost, it would cost the world $960 billion to halt global warming by 2100, using only SAI. While this is a lot of money, it would be spread out over many decades, amounting to only $15 billion per year. This is incredibly realistic, so I'll give SAI a light 3 for cost. But what about the danger? Sulfate aerosols are incredibly damaging to the ozone layer. If we were to pump tons of these into the stratosphere, it would cause the Antarctic ozone hole to stick around another 70 years, if not longer. Needless to say, this is not good. Also, sulfate aerosols will eventually drift back down to the troposphere, where they will become acid rain, impacting pH-sensitive ecosystems around the world. Alternative aerosols, like calcite and aluminum oxide, do not destroy ozone or create acid rain, but can't address other potential risks. Even if SAI cools the planet, it'll do nothing to address increasing ocean acidification from all the extra CO2 in the air. There are also risks of precipitation patterns changing, along with significantly reducing the output of solar farms. Also, if something happens geopolitically and aerosol injection stops, the resulting rapid temperature spike back to pre-aerosol levels would cause mass extinctions for animals incapable of adapting in time. For all these reasons and more, I will give SAI a hard 8 for danger. However, a redeeming part of the strategy is its low uncertainty. We know for sure that sulfate aerosols will cool the climate because we've seen it happen during volcano eruptions. Still, I'm going to give SAI a 3 for uncertainty since there are several options other than sulfate. The numbers are in, and it looks like we have a total score of 14 for SAI. Let's see how this stacks up against marine cloud brightening. Marine cloud brightening, or MCB, is the proposal to seed white, fluffy, sun-blocking clouds above the ocean using a natural sea salt spray as cloud seeds. The cost of MCB comes from the vessels needed to float on the ocean surface, churning seawater into a fine mist and pushing it high into the air. Most proposals for these types of vessels put the cost per ship at around $75 to $150 million. Once we make about 2,400 of these ships and get them going making clouds, the cost of maintaining them is estimated at around $6 billion per year to stabilize climate in RCP-6. 
that's practically nothing compared to most wealthy government expenditures, so I'll give MCB a 2 for cost. But would all these extra clouds and salt in the air significantly affect the ocean? The only serious concern is how all the regional cooling will affect the way ocean currents behave. The extra shade will not seriously impact photosynthesis, as diffuse light will still be reaching the ocean. Plus, the use of sea salt as the cloud condensation nuclei avoids the dangers of introducing foreign chemicals. It is quite honestly the most harmless of all the geoengineering ideas, and for that reason, I'll give it a light 1 in danger. The only question now is how certain we are that these clouds will cool the climate. Most models predict that we would need anywhere from 25 to 50% of the open ocean continuously covered in clouds to ensure enough cooling. There are also debates over specific sizes for the sea salt aerosol and the best way of producing these consistently. The only way we will come to conclusive answers to these questions will be rigorous field testing in order to observe how they behave in the real world. Until then, MCB gets a 4 in uncertainty. After crunching the numbers, MCB is sitting pretty at 7 and is looking pretty appealing. But let's see how this compares to the coolest idea on the list. The idea behind space sunshades is to launch a swarm of small disks into a point in space between the Earth and Sun, blocking sunlight before it even reaches the planet. As of today, the cost of launching 1 kilogram of material to the L1 point is an optimistic three dollars to $4,000. Even if we waited a few more years for space flights to get cheaper, this project is predicted to cost anywhere from 3 to 7 trillion dollars to offset global warming. There would need to be some sort of international funding for such an expensive project, which is why I'm giving Sunshades a 7 for cost. It's not unthinkably expensive, but the cost isn't helping it. However, the Sunshade idea does not pose any risks to Earth's biosphere. The main danger for such a project would be the rapid increase in mining and manufacturing dedicated to producing sunshades and new launch sites. This would most likely not be done with renewable energy and would therefore seriously accelerate climate change while also trying to prevent its effects. For this, I'm giving sunshades a 3 in danger. And there isn't a lot of uncertainty in terms of their ability to stop global warming. By putting giant shades in space to block a specific amount of sunlight from reaching the Earth, it will cool the planet. Our ability to launch this many satellites to the L1 point may be hindered by logistical problems though, such as space junk, failed launches, orbital stability, and solar flares to name a few. I'll give Sunshades a soft 3 for uncertainty. This puts Sunshades at a total of 13, putting it in second just ahead of SAI. Will our next strategy manage to take the lead? Ocean Iron Fertilization, or OIF, is the proposal to fertilize the ocean surface with iron, creating blooms of photosynthesizing plankton that will pull carbon dioxide out of the air. While the cost of iron in boats isn't that high, there are serious doubts about whether or not this strategy will effectively sequester carbon in the long term. Depending on how optimistic these estimates are, that could put the price to sequester one ton of CO2 anywhere from $83 to $457 per ton. While that may sound okay at first, RCP6 would mean an extra 800 gigatons of CO2 in the atmosphere. This would put the total cost of OIF to be somewhere in the hundreds of trillions of dollars if we wanted to use this as our only strategy to remove CO2. While OIF would most likely be used in tandem with other greenhouse gas removal strategies, this is still really expensive, so I'll give it a hard 7 for cost, only because it could be potentially way cheaper. There are some serious dangers to be addressed with this strategy as well. A constant rapid growth of phytoplankton will seriously impact marine ecosystems. Not just at the surface, but also in the depths, where the sinking plankton will be ideally going. This could cause increased acidification in the deep ocean and create more harmful algal blooms at the surface. I'm going to have to give it a 4 for danger if we were to scale this to the levels needed. And now we arrive at OIF's most notorious factor its uncertainty. The truth is that there just hasn't been enough research to say whether or not this can actually remove carbon dioxide at scalable levels. Why do some experiments like IFEX get 50% of their surface carbon reaching the deep ocean, whereas other similar experiments see 0%? To consider OIF as a real solution to climate change, and not just as a half-baked carbon credits market, these questions need answers. For this, I'll give it a soft 5 in uncertainty. 
things aren't looking good for OIF, putting it in last with 16. Finally, we reach our last contender. Ocean Alkalinity Enhancement, or OAE, is the plan to dissolve certain minerals in the ocean to react with dissolved carbon dioxide and remove it from the water. This will allow the ocean to dissolve more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere while also raising its pH to make it less acidic. The cost of OAE comes from the mining and processing of the mineral used. While the true cost would not be known until a mineral was chosen, estimates using olivine, one of the most ideal options, put the price somewhere between $20 and $50 per ton of CO2 removed. To offset the atmospheric increase in CO2 from RCP6, would still cost a few trillion dollars at the very least, making this a pretty expensive option. I'm gonna have to give it a strong 6 in cost. The main danger that OAE has is how it could impact ocean ecosystems. Dissolving olivine in the ocean will add tons of silicic acid, which is an essential nutrient for diatoms, a type of phytoplankton. This might cause diatom populations to explode in the areas where OAE is taking place. Also, dumping billions of tons of minerals at the surface, even if they dissolve quickly, will have unforeseen consequences on deep ocean ecosystems and nutrient cycles. For this reason, I'll give OAE a soft 2 in danger. And when it comes to uncertainty, we are pretty certain that this strategy will work. OAE chemically changes the CO2 in the ocean to bicarbonate ions, allowing the ocean to pull more CO2 from our atmosphere. The new bicarbonate ions are also more alkaline than carbon dioxide, so they go from causing ocean acidification to curing it. For this high certainty and the ability to address two aspects of climate change at once, I will give it a 1 in uncertainty. In a stunning upset, OAE takes the second place seat with a low score of 9, but not low enough to topple MCB. So there you have it, Marine Cloud Brightening takes the gold medal for the most feasible geoengineering strategy. Now before things start getting heated for diehard fans of the other options, this is just my opinion. Granted I'm basing this decision on multiple primary sources and trying to stay as unbiased as possible, but it was still a close call on the best strategy. If you feel like I left something out of my decision or ruled unfairly, please let me know in the comments, I'd love to hear it. Also just because I believe MCB is the best option does not mean that we should start seeding the clouds right now. There are logistical issues that need to be addressed before such a program could get started. More field research and funding will be needed to find answers to these questions, but I believe we could see some sort of large-scale operations started as early as the 2030s. It will take incredible amounts of international cooperation, trust, and commitment to address this global crisis. But if all goes well, marine cloud brightening might just give us a cooler future than we could have hoped for. Thank you for sticking around to the end, especially if you've been watching since part 1. As you can tell, geoengineering really fascinates me, despite the major concerns associated with it. Hopefully after this series, you have a better understanding of how SRM and GGR strategies work, and their potential to address climate change. If you still have questions, I would love to hear them in the comments section. I'll get back to them as soon as I can. As always, our sources are all linked in the description. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to support Planet Zero. I'll see you next time.